Twelve gates. Twelve gates. Twelve lessons. Twelve lessons. Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve gates. Twelve gates. Twelve lessons. Twelve lessons. Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve gates. Twelve gates. Twelve lessons. direction to. Toe? All right, so don't, don't panic. No panic attacks right now. The house of removed sandals. How many know there are four levels of Hebraic interpretation? Pashat, Remez, Drash, not Sod, Sod. Sod is something we put in our lawns. So there are four levels of interpretation at least, and the rabbis tell us there's 39 one. Who knows how deep you can go in the word because the levels of Yahweh are unfathomable and searchable, even yea, even path finding out. So we'll keep it today on the remez and the drosh, or the hint, the allegory, the metaphorical. We'll take you back and forth between the second and third floor. So turn your neighbor and say second and third floor message. We'll do a second and third floor message. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So we're going to go from their hint to the drosh. Again, entitled the message, The House of Removed Sandals. If you're hungry for the word, you're going to enjoy this one. If you're not hungry for the word, you're going to be bored. Okay? And those of you who are bored, the only way you're going to be bored is if you're bored by choice. Okay? Okay? I'm going to take you a little bit. You're going to see some things that you perhaps you never saw in scripture before. Devarim. 25, Devorim 25, and let's start in verse 5. Deuteronomy 25, and verse number 5. How many have come to hear the word also this morning? Amen. Okay, it's not just about shouting and dancing and wiggling. Okay. All right, and we, I know we got some wigglers here, that's Tov. We have Nazarene wigglers, but it's also about the word. If you don't get the word, you haven't gotten fed. You may run into the lunchroom later, but that doesn't mean you've gotten fed. You need to get fed now before you enter the lunchroom. It's all about the word. Without the word, you can do nothing. You are nothing. You have nothing. Okay? I don't care who's wearing what. I don't care how long their beard is. Okay? I don't care how modernized your synthesizers are. Or how impressed you are with someone's head covering. It's all about the word. Without the word, you are nothing. You can do nothing. You will be nothing. And nothing is achieved without the word. Rabbi Moshe has come to bring you the word this morning, so you need to prepare your heart Amen. in Yeshua's name. Amen. Devarim 25 and verse number 5. When brothers dwell together and one of them has died and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not become a stranger. Notice how many strangers are there in Israel? None. Zero. Nada de particular. Zero. Everyone in Israel is Israel. There are to be no strangers in Israel. When a husband of a woman dies, her husband's brother, she, the dead man, the wife of the dead man, shall not become a stranger. Meaning the body of Yeshua is not composed of Jews and Gentiles. It is composed of Israel and Israel. Different Israelites from a different background, from a different cloth, from a different tribe, from a different ethnicity, from a different atmosphere, from a different state, but they are all Yisrael. They're no strangers. And Yahweh gave this principle, this chuk. What is a chuk? What is a, what is a chuk? A law that in the Pashat doesn't necessarily click, it's hard to grasp. Okay? A mishpat is a ooh. Ooh. That's, it. That's a right ruling. I, I can figure that one out. A mishpat. That's easy. That's the right ruling. Turn your neighbor and say mishpat. 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 
<laughs> Let's try that again. Turn your name and say Mishpat. 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 Oh, I can figure that out. Even I can figure that one out. But a hook means, whoa, Yahweh, you're going to have to show this to me. You're going to have to reveal this to me. You're going to have to manifest this to me. Because without, if you don't show it to me, I won't be able to grasp it. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. Her husband's brother does go into her that, that reads exactly the way it reads in English. <laughs> Any language, it reads the same way. And shall take as her as a wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother. So this is the hook of the husband's brother to her. Why? Yahweh does not want that woman being referred to, looked upon, or, or, or gazed upon as a stranger. There are no strangers. We are all members and citizens, amen, of the commonwealth of Yisrael. So this whole hook is designed so that there will be no stranger, especially the widow who has had her husband die during their marriage. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. To perform the duty of a husband's brother to her, verse 6. It shall be that the firstborn, it shall be that the firstborn son, which she bears, does rise up for the name of his dead brother, so that his name is not blotted out in Yisrael. So the, the, the brother of the dead husband goes into the widow raises up a seed, and that seed will carry on the duties so that the name of the dead husband is per per perpetuated or continues in perpetuity in Israel. Make sense? What do we glean right away? What are the first two things we glean? The first thing we glean is that there are no gay reem in Israel. Yahweh doesn't want gay reem, he wants Israelites. Amen. The second thing we glean here is that every name in Israel is precious, is costly, and is of great value in the eyes of Yahweh Elohim. We're not just, well, you know, we got this little group going and Hodu, and you know, you know, it's just Shabbat, and you know, it was kind of nice, and you know, we had some Hebrew national hot dogs for lunch, and you know, you know, kind of, it was kind of cool, you know, I met some people that I used to know, you know, it was kind of cool. Oh, bad. Bad Israelite. That's not what it's about. It's about every name in this room continuing for eternity. Through the blood of Yeshua spiritually, but through the seed of physical Israel as we grow and raise our children and our families as Israel, by Israel, through Israel. Are you with me? Yeshua's surname, according to Yeshua 49, is Israel. Yeshua said, I come in my Father's name. If Yeshua's surname, if he's the personification of Israel, then guess what his father's name is? Uh, yes. Israel. Mm -hmm. Another name for Yahweh, another title for Yahweh is Israel. You won't go there, that's too heavy right now. So everyone in this room can see from this Torah, the Torah of the husband, the dead husband, or the husband's brother, as it's known, is for every name to live forever as part of the commonwealth of Israel. That's who you are. That's who I am. <laughs> Yahweh's desire for us is that every name live forever as part of the commonwealth of Israel. Does that put a smile on your face? It does mine, I'll tell you that. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And if a man does not desire to take his brother's wife, meaning he refuses to fulfill this mitzvah, then let his brother's wife go to the gate of the Zechenim, the elders, and say, my husband's brother refuses, turn to your neighbor and say refuses. Refuses. Refuses to raise up a name. Not just see, not just take over, not just have sex with his ex, with his sister-in-law. No. He re is refusing to raise up the name and the perpetuity of the name as eternal. Because whatever Yahweh does, he does for Ever. Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and for yes. ever. I am Yahweh Malachi 3 6. I change not. not. Everything Yahweh does is forever. If He's made you Israel, if you've come into the truth of the two house restoration so that we become one Israel, it is not just for you, but it is for your children, your sons, and your daughters, even as to those who are all that are far off, even as to as many as Yahweh our Elohim shall call. Does this make sense? Huh? 
to, it is to, per, to continue that Yisraelite truth and heritage in future generations in your family and in your life. You're the first of many. You're not the first, gen the only generation that's going to walk in this revelation, but you're the first of many, many, many generations. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. But if the brother refuses to raise up the, the name of the dead husband, the, the widow shall go to the gates, to the elders of the city, and say to him, the elders of the city shall then call him. She shall say, he refuses to perform the duty. Verse 8, the elders of the city will call him and say to him, and he will stand and say, openly and frankly, I have no desire to take her. Hello? He, in other words, what's he, what's he basically saying in essence? I'm not interested in doing the Torah. <laughs> I'm not interested in obeying Yahweh. I'm not interested in performing the responsibility of the husband's brother. Amen? This is all Peshat stuff. But we're going to see how the Peshat's going to lead to the... What? Huh? 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 Right, tov, to the remnants. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Verse 8. Um, I have no desire to take her. Verse 9. Then the brother's wife, the uh, widow, shall come to him in the presence to the brother who refuses to perform the mitzvah, in the presence of the zechenim, and remove his sandal from his feet. Who, ta who takes a sandal off the brother's feet? The widow. The widow. The widow. She removes a sandal. This, this, this morning's message, the house of removed sandals. Let me, let me just tell you, you don't want to be in that house. We talk about the two houses. Here's another one for you. The house of removed sandals. You don't want to be part of the house of removed sandals. That's not our calling. That's not our purpose. That's not our goal. That's not our destiny. That's, that's not our inheritance. You don't want to be part of the house of removed sandals. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. They're busy cutting something in. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So the brother, the widow, shall, in the presence of the Zechanian, will remove the sandal from the brother who refuses to perform, spit in his face, and answer and say, this is done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. This is done to the man. Spit and shoe removal. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'll leave out the first part. Turn to your neighbor and say, shoe removal. Shoe removal. A, every person who is Yisrael, who has been called to build up our brother's house and refuses to do so will be shamed before the elders of the city spit upon by those who are in bereavement and it will be said of them this is the man who does not build up his brother's house you don't want to be that person I don't want to be that person we don't want to be that person but guess what brothers and sisters look at verse 10 and in Israel, his name shall be called the house. In other words, you didn't want to raise up seed in Israel? No problem. From now on, you'll be known as the part of the house or the house of him who had his sandal removed. How many know there are a lot of born-again believers who are part of this house? They know the two-house truth. They've heard the two-house truth. They've understood the two-house truth and they haven't followed through, and they're not walking in it, they're not sharing it, because they believe it's one of the doctrinal checkpoints on some doctrinal checklist that you just check off saying, yay, nay, yay, nay, no, yes, I believe in that, I don't believe in that, I do believe in healing, I don't believe in tongues, I do believe in miracles, I don't believe in Benny Hinn, I do believe in me, I don't believe in John Lennon. Ah! It's not just another thing on a doctrinal checklist. It is your, your chance to manifest whether it will be said of you, you are part of the house of him who Yahweh may remove your sandal. See, unlike the Torah days, we are now in the renewed Torah days. Turn to your neighbor and say, renewed Torah days. <laughs> Yahweh, it will no longer be the widow who removes your sandal. If you and I refuse to build our brother's house, it will be Yahweh doing the removing. 
And when Yahweh removes your sandals, sweetheart, it's not to give you a pedicure, trust me. And it's not even to spit in your face. He will just make sure you 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 sow what you what you reap what you sow. As Israel, it is a hook leolam voed forever to raise up the name of our brother's house. We have no choice. We have no alternative. We know how, we have Judah must raise up Ephraim, and Ephraim must raise up Yehuda. And if the two do not build up not just their own kingdom, their own house, their own coffers, their own cupboard, and they refuse to build up the others, meaning Judah has got to go into the churches, teach the churches, work with the churches, labor with the churches, co-labor with the churches churches, wrestle and struggle with the churches, and build up our brother's house, and bring them into Israel, and raise up a name for them as Israel, in Israel. Amen. Ephraim, on the other hand, has to go to Judah with the truth of Yeshua, with the truth of Mashiach, with the truth of eternal life, with the truth of the blood, and get out of the four walls of the church, or the church without walls, <laughs> and find Yehuda and say, Without the blood of repentance, there is no remission of sin. Amen. So we have a unique calling at Hodu. It's just not just, well, you know, where were you sitting? I don't know, somewhere over there. What did you do? I don't know. I just, I just came for the wedding. If you're here today, you've got a calling as the Commonwealth of Israel, and the calling is you will, you will build up your brother's house. You will. You will embrace the two-house truth as a daily reality, seeking to save and to seek that which was lost. Come on. Because if you don't, Yahweh will make you part. Say, okay, you don't want to be part of the house of Israel where you're required. I'll take you to the elders and I'll expose you in front of the elders and I'll remove the sandal and you don't want to be part of the rebuilt, renewed commonwealth house of Israel. No problem. You'll be part of the house of those who have had their sandals this is the man. removed. Not me, sweetheart. I don't, not you. That shouldn't be us. Amen? We don't want to be part of the house that has had their sandals removed. But notice, that man is not left alone. Yahweh confesses that man's sin, openly, publicly rebukes that man's sin in front of all the, how many? All the elders of Israel. Old Coast Cafe. Do you see what I'm saying? Yahweh is about to take a lot of believers, take them outside the city gates, and allow them to be exposed by removing their sandals. I'm getting some holy looks in here, which is good because that means you're paying attention. <laughs> if we believe Torah is forever, we've got to believe Yahweh is still ready and willing and able to expose and remove the sandals of Yisrael who have been called to walk in this anointing and refuse to walk in it. What was the attitude of the man? What was the attitude of the brother of the dead husband? I'm not raising up seed. I don't want to raise up seed. I don't want to raise up a name. I have my own agenda. I have my own kingdom. I'm going to build. I'm going to, I'm going to win Jewish souls for the Lord. I have no That's nice. What about your friend? Who's going to rescue them? Not you? Fine. Yahweh says that I'll put you in the house of those who have had their sandals removed. We've got to do both things. We've got to lead Jewish people to Yeshua, and we've got to build our brother's house. And Ephraim and Yehuda, you have got to pull Ephraim and teach them and work with them and not only condemn them, although we all do that sometimes, but work with them, mold them, shape them, and so forth. Pull them out and bring and raise up a name for them in Israel. Come on. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't go into the church. I won't go in. Well, fine. Then, then Yahweh will remove your sand. What do you mean you won't go in? What hellhole did Yeshua not go into? Right. What, what pit of depravity did Yeshua not go into Amen. to rescue people, to bring Amen. people to revelation, to bring people to illumination, to bring people to truth? Preach it. What pit, what pit of destruction did he refuse to go into? Now, I'm not comparing all churches with pits of destruction. I'm saying we all have our Babylonian blindness, and we all have areas that we are blind in. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Again, this message, the house of the removed sandal. Look at verse 10. In Yisrael, 
His name will be called the house of him who had his sail removed. You missed that. Where, are we, where is this man or woman who refused to, refuses to build his brother's house? Where are they going to have their name exposed and have their sandals removed? In Israel, in front of the elders, by Yahweh himself. Now, if that doesn't frighten you to righteousness, nothing will. Can I get a witness? I said, can I get a witness? Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Judah and Ephraim lived together. They lived together. As they say in the world, once upon a time, the two houses were a hot. But something happened. Ephraim died. Ephraim died in Israelite truth. He died to his Israelite heritage. He died to having a name in Israel. He died to having perpetuity in Israel. He died to having the Torah as the constitution of Israel. Ephraim died. Not only he died according to Yirmiyahu, go to Yirmiyahu 318. 3-8. Yirmiyahu 3-8. Is anyone enjoying? Come on. Amen. Other than Ted, is anyone enjoying? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Beltrami. Yirmiyahu 3-8. I know the voice of my sheep. Come on. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Amen. 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 Yirmiyahu. Amen. Give me a page when you get there, please. 3-8. Yirmiyahu 3-8. 468. 468. I saw for all the causes of, back, of which backsliding Israel had committed adultery. I put her away and gave her a get, a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Yehuda did not fear, but went and committed whoring also. Yeah, we said of Ephraim, not only they died, I put her away, and if you're put away, and if you are given a certificate of divorce, it is away, away from the presence of the Father, and nothing can live apart from the presence of the Father. Did you get that? Nothing can live apart from the presence of the Father. So Ephraim died. 